Hi everyone and welcome to another in-depth piano review here on the Miriam Pianos YouTube channel. My name is Stu Harrison. Today we're looking deeply at the FP30X. This is a brand new stage piano, portable piano, 88 note piano from Roland. It replaces the FP30 and boy, they have managed to cram in quite a few meaningful changes and upgrades to this instrument for more or less the same price. I really like this piano. Anyway, we're gonna be going through exactly uh, what uh, they've done on this instrument. You're gonna be hearing it, you're gonna be listening to quite a few uh, sound samples. We talk about action, talking about connectivity and other features included in this FP30X. We've also done another video where we literally just side by side compare the FP30 and FP30X and point out everywhere where they've made those upgrades. So anyway, thank you so much for joining us. Let's get started with this right away. So we're in front of the brand new FP30X, as I mentioned in the intro, and this instrument to be is uh, an interesting uh, addition to the market for, for a few reasons, um, but probably the most prominent is this sits at a point, uh, not necessarily uh, because of price, but just because of function, where it's right on the line between uh, something being targeted towards, say, a, a home user hobbyist. Um, versus something that a professional user may actually wind up picking up for some uh, some light gigging or even you know heavy gigging. It's one of those prosumer type products that has enough guts in it, has enough features in it that quite a few professionals are going to find lots to like out of this instrument. But there's also going to be quite a few people uh, that aren't you know wouldn't describe themselves as professionals that are also going to really enjoy the instrument for a few reasons. Uh, so it's inexpensive enough uh, that you're you're getting your home crowd and it's full featured enough that you're getting a good amount of your professional crowd and some of the predecessors of the FP30 had a few feature gaps that prevented it from truly straddling both of those worlds I think the FP30X is a tremendous blend of all of those needs being met uh, in one package without uh, letting the price get out of hand. So we're in front of the FP30X. This is a weighted 88 note keyboard. We're going to uh, start by talking about its sound, but as we said in the introduction, we're also gonna cover its action. We're gonna talk about some of its connectivity uh, and, and you know describe who we think uh, this might be uh, best targeted towards. So let's begin with the sound. The FP30X um, runs on a brand new chipset from Roland. It's called the BMC chip. Uh, that's like a BM stands for the behavioral modeling. I think that's just more or less fancy language for a new and improved processor. Um, it's using the Supernatural Piano algorithm uh, engine, the Supernatural Piano engine that Roland has built and developed and deployed for many, many, many years. Obviously, they continue to improve it, but the Supernatural chip uh, is, or the Supernatural engine, is more or less an algorithm that's based with a core sample, and then they layer a number of other nuances on top of that core sample in a dynamic way, depending on how you play, to really create a fairly uh, authentic, um, you know, experience. The approach is not dissimilar to what Kawhi has done uh, with their um, harmonic imaging. So again, using uh, a central sample and then adding other layers onto it. So we've got this new processor using an existing engine. And what's the result of that? Why is that even worth noting? Well, uh, we're going to do another video where we actually compare the FP30X to its predecessor, the FP30. And you're actually going to hear a difference in the sound quality itself, the signal quality itself coming out of this BMC chip uh, versus the previous architecture. I wasn't expecting to actually hear much of a difference, uh, but I was pleasantly surprised to realize that it's a lot more than just uh, kind of a talking point from Roland. It really obviously has made a difference. So we've got the BMC chip operating on a supernatural engine, and this 
is what it sounds like. So the fidelity is really great, especially in the, those quieter parts where you're really hearing the tails of the notes. It also seems a little more dynamic than some of the other Rollins that I've played. Uh, one of the things I've noticed about Rollins over the years is that the tonal architecture really tends to compress uh, the level of expression. That's not to say that there isn't a decent amount of tonal variety in how you play the instrument, but the volume range tends to be fairly compressed uh, and it's just not uh, quite as uh, lively as what you might get out of uh, sort of a similar price Kawhi or even some of the Yamahas that are out there. Uh, and so that always made it a very forgiving piano to play, made it always a really great instrument in a live setting to play, but sometimes with personal piano playing, um, it always left me wanting a, a just bit more dynamic range. I was starting to get that out of some of the higher level LX series from Roland over the last couple of years. And now I'm also starting to hear some of those expanded dynamics coming out of something like an FP30X. So for people who are thinking about this instrument for personal playing and maybe you're a bit more of a classical player or maybe you really enjoy uh, playing uh, music where you know a nice lush palette of tone is going to be a tool for you, you might really be impressed with what this instrument has to offer. And I again, I, I think that has to be that they've jacked up uh, quite a bit of the complexity in the tonal algorithm because that BMC chip is in there. They can really just push it a lot harder. Uh, the polyphony on there, which is always a bit of a barometer of the quality of the, uh, you know, the processor, not always, uh, but in this case, it's jumped 256 notes worth of polyphony. That was a fairly substantial increase over what the previous SP30 has. Uh, and not only does that mean that you are never, ever going to really be taxing that processor, uh, it also, again, speaks to, I think, the level of um, complexity that they can jack the algorithm up to, and that's what's giving you uh, such a, a lush tone and such a lush expression out of the instrument. Another thing that they have done on this instrument uh, is loaded it up with some really substantial speakers for its size and its price. The average wattage per speaker on instruments that are in and around the seven eight hundred dollar U.S. range, and also in this kind of weight category, which is around the thirty pound weight category, there's probably you know six seven 
possibly even more models in the industry that kind of fall into that category that are serving this very specific niche. Uh, and the average uh, speaker size is six watts, seven watts, that's generally what it is. The FP30, they've uh, loaded that up to 11 watts per side and you can really tell the difference in the lower mids. Uh, this has quite a bit more body than I'm used to getting uh, out, of, um, out of other instruments that are in that range. We are taking stereo line outs, by the way, but we are also recording this with two large diaphragm microphones so that you're getting a really good sense of what the speakers are putting out as well. So throughout this uh, whole uh, review, we're going to be uh, indicating when you're hearing either just the line outs or the microphone. So you can really uh, try and get an impression of what those 11 watt speakers are giving you uh, even sitting at home watching this on YouTube. In addition to the piano sound, because of course that's what I generally tend to focus on, but these come with all kinds of other sounds uh, other than just acoustic piano sounds. So there are quite a few uh, 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 alternate acoustic piano tones that you can choose from. And one of the ways that you can select it is by using the user interface, but another much easier way, if you have a mobile device, uh, is to actually hook this up with the Bluetooth connection to say a phone or a tablet and uh, get Roland's app up, uh, which they call Piano Every Day. So the Piano Every Day allows you uh, to use a remote control function where you don't have to know any of these uh, you know, shortcut keys whatsoever. You can just go to the remote control. You can select your tone for a single play. That means you know, one tone across the entire keyboard. Uh, and here are all of the different options you have for acoustics. So this is concert piano. And ballad piano. And a mellow piano. Bright piano. piano that's actually quite nice mellow upright bright upright that's a little bit odd rock piano ragtime Magical, magical piano. What the heck is that? Kind of cool. And then your harpsichord. Uh, that sounds like it's actually been quite improved upon uh, versus the last one. So those are the category uh, selections that you get for acoustic piano. Um, then uh, e-piano, the 1976 suitcase, which is really kind of a flagship tone for Roland across many models. <laughs> And 
definitely one of my favorites. You know, Whirly 200. <laughs> Vibraphone. And Celeste. Lots of different organs to choose from. Some really beautiful stuff in there. Uh, in addition to being able to play uh, just uh, single tones, and by the way, I didn't mean to skip over all the pad tones that they've got, which are some really gorgeous stuff. <laughs> That is nice and sparkly. One of the th things, or I guess one of the categories that I've always loved the best about, say, Yamaha synths, is just how active and how colorful a lot of their thick synth pads are. And it was something that I never really thought Roland uh, had the same level of, uh, I guess, depth to the tone. Some of the analog sounds, yes, uh, but some, some of the uh, more modern crystalline uh, type pads. Uh, that Stack 50, starts to get a lot closer. That is that is some lovely stuff. Those are some highly usable pads in there. Uh, what else do we have? Some uh, guitar stuff. Any guitar players out there is like, that is the worst demo on guitar ever. They don't play scales like that. It's like, yeah, you're right. I'm not a guitar player, so that's probably not the best uh, example I could have played. Um, and then we've got many different uh, drum sets on here as well. And then the full General 2 MIDI sound bank, which is available, uh, which is uh, like over 100 sounds. So a huge variety of tones, especially when you're using it in conjunction with the app that are now available through the FP30X. In addition to just being able to play single uh, at one time, you also have the option of being able to split the piano. People who are regular keyboard users will know that this is a common function, but for those of you who actually don't know that this is a common function, basically you can have uh, in your left hand one tone and in your right hand a totally other tone, and you can set the split point where it changes from one to the other. So we've got a bass down in the left hand and we've got a guitar on the right. change that to something like that. Kind of cool. Uh, then uh, you also have dual mode, uh, which is where you've got two sounds that are both uh, kind of simultaneously cover the entire keyboard. So you can hear sort of the strings and roads in there.
And again, I really, really like um, how you're able to control this using the app. It's so much easier than trying to do this uh, with key commands, believe me. Yeah, way, way easier to do this uh, on the app than using the key command. So we can change the balance. <laughs> octave shift as well which is really handy and then very very easy to select the, the first and second tone and then twin piano which really is often uh, used in teaching situations or duets those are the two most common applications where you have two parts of the keyboard that have identical ranges and identical um, uh, instruments <laughs> So let's just review exactly what we've got with sound because there's a lot going on here with the FP30. Uh, we have a 256 note polyphony, brand new sound chip, the BMC sound chip. We have on board without the app, over 50 sounds that you have the ability to choose from. If you add the app, that goes up to close to 200 sounds uh, and that includes all kinds of high quality uh, drum parts as well. Uh, you can split the keyboard, you can layer the keyboard, you can do twin piano, and all of that is very easy to do either from the app or there's some really, really good uh, cheat notes that they've added right behind the keys, which is something that I think every keyboard manufacturer should do. Those who are listening and care about this feedback, I think it's great. I don't think it takes away from the aesthetic of the keys and it really saves us players a lot of time in digging through the user manual. So it's really good. Glad to see that that's finally happening here on the FP30X. And then last but not least, we've got those 11 watt speakers uh, versus the average for this category, which is usually in and around the six or seven range. So beefier sound. One thing I didn't mention about the speakers before we move on to the action uh, is this actually has a EQ setting or a kind of a signal processing setting where you can tell it whether you are putting this on the to uh, top of a table or whether it's sitting on a stand. And what that does is it actually adjusts the speaker tone to be more appropriate for really close reflection versus like a floor reflection. Uh, because there are quite a few people who are using this as a MIDI input who are doing some you know, home production and this is actually the, the device that they are using to interface with their DAW. So that's it for sound. We are going to move on to action right now, but thank you so much for being with us so far. We're going to throw some of those specs up on the screen for you and we'll be back in just a second. Okay, so we are back with action. This uses the PHA4 action. That is an action that Roland deploys in a number of its instruments. Uh, it would be considered a professional grade action, but kind of at the entry level point, Roland's PHA50 is a bit more robust, has a few extra features in there that's gonna give it more longevity, as well as probably a bit more sensitivity. But the PHA4, which has escapement and a triple sensor, is on paper probably the most advanced action that you can get at a low price point in the marketplace. Um, you know, it outguns what Kawhi offers at this price, it outguns what Yamaha offers at this price, or what Korg offers at this price. Uh, now, action is a highly personal thing, so just because something is good on paper doesn't necessarily mean that everybody's gonna like it out there. You do need, if possible, to get into a dealership uh, and play one of these actions to see if it's the right fit. But from my experience, the PHA4 is really well balanced. It doesn't feel too heavy, it doesn't feel too light, it's really right down the middle in terms of its weighting. Uh, it feels really good to play in both a classical context as well as a jazz context. Um, the one thing that I will say about the PHA4 is that for people who are really going to play this instrument hard, just like any plastic action out there, um, with the exception of maybe Roland's PHA50 and a few other ones up there, um, there is going to be some mechanical looseness that develops over time. This is kind of just the nature of the beast. Doesn't mean that it's a good thing. Uh, obviously, if it didn't, if it didn't happen, it would be a better thing. But it isn't, I don't think, anything uh, that ne anybody needs to be particularly alarmed about because this is what you get on virtually any plastic action 
uh, under $2,000. Uh, and it has been that way really since the beginning of the whole digital piano universe uh, got underway. Now, I will have to play this PHA-4 a lot more over the course of the next several months because one of the things that my first impression was is this action feels a little bit tighter. There feels like there's less um, free mechanical motion in there, uh, which it's quite possible that there have been some engineering updates to this action that Roland hasn't necessarily disclosed. Now, one other thing that I think is, is maybe a bit of a hint that this is a slightly updated action is that the surface on the black keys appears to be different than what was on uh, previous PHA4 actions. So when we get into that comparison, looking at what the FP30 was and where the FP30X has made improvements, we're gonna do the same thing on the FP60, FP60X, and FP90, FP90X. Uh, we will see side by side whether there is actually a difference. But to my eye right now, it looks as though it's a slightly different uh, surface material on the black key. So we could be looking at at just like a second generation PHA-4 standard action. We shall see. Other than that, you've got a really subtle texture on the white key, which is always something I like, regardless of the manufacturer who does it. Always prefer a bit of a texture there. Uh, I'm still getting a little bit used to the texture on top of the black key. Um, it would, uh, it's a little more grippy than what I'm used to. certainly not anything that's taking away from the playability of it. That's it for action. We are going to be back with our third section where we're covering some of the other features and functionality and connectivity options on the FP30X. Once again, thanks for being with us. We'll be back in just a second. So let's talk some of the other options that this has to offer other than the sound that you've heard, other than the action that we've just talked about. It has Bluetooth uh, MIDI. That means that you can, it's bi-directional communication between this and any other device that's Bluetooth MIDI compatible. Uh, that's what allows for the wireless connection with the Roland software, but it also can permit wireless connections to your computer where you might be running something like Ableton or Logic or Pro Tools or something like that with virtual instruments. Um, but for the first time in this category, Roland is also including Bluetooth audio. That does not mean this broadcasts Bluetooth audio. I, I've started saying that in virtually all of my videos because uh, it breaks my heart every time I hear about somebody who buys a pair of Bluetooth headphones expecting to be able to use it with a keyboard like this because they see the Bluetooth symbol and say, yeah, yeah, and then no. This is not going to broadcast to Bluetooth headset, headset. However, you can broadcast to this instrument and use that pair of 11 watt speakers to play music and use it as a like a, in a practice setting where you're playing along with the track that's can be sometimes uh, quite useful uh, so you can also uh, not using bluetooth uh, connect with the usb key and play back mp3 it'll play back wave and it'll play back a standard midi file uh, all of which are quite useful. You can record in MIDI, but you cannot record uh, in audio on the FP30X. However, there is an onboard recorder with the app that will basically record uh, MIDI. The only trouble is it kind of stays stuck in the app unless you jimmy rig a way to get the audio out of the app. So really the most effective way to record audio out of the FP30 is probably 
with its twin quarter inch outs. And that's where you can run that into either a PA or of course an audio interface. If you are using really good quality cables, uh, you know, uh, gold connector cables, for audio files, I know that that you know, can make a difference. And if you're really worried about the fidelity of the recording, get yourself a, a short, good pair of quarter inch connectors and a decent audio interface. And you're almost as good as if you just had a direct digital connection. Uh, so it's got that. Uh, obviously, this can accommodate a single pedal. Definitely recommend upgrading that to the DP10 pedal or any of the DP uh, pedal series because it just kind of comes with that little plastic switchy thing, which, you know, it works, but it's annoying. Um, I guess they do that just to keep the price down, but it would be nice if they included it. Uh, but I know yeah, this, Roland is not alone in doing this. Many of the companies in this price range just include the basic plastic pedal switch. So upgrade if you can. Uh, it comes in two colors. It comes in white. It also comes in black. It comes with a matching stand if you wanted to, and it also accommodates a triple pedal board uh, that you need to use the matching pedal stand, uh, matching stand uh, with. It also uh, comes with a music stand, which I don't have here just for the sake of the video, uh, but it does have its own music stand, which is also very, very handy. Uh, You've got your headphone jacks, which are easily accessible from the front, and it's both the 3.5 mil as well as the quarter inch. So it doesn't really matter what your favorite headset you have or headphones you have, whether there's an adapter or not, it's going to accommodate it. And thankfully, as we already mentioned, because you've got those quarter inch stereo outs, you don't have to use your headphone jack uh, to actually uh, output audio to some other external device. You've got the ability to play back uh, songs on here uh, that are loaded on your uh, USB key. And of course, there's lots of repertoire that you can play back through the app. Um, we're going to do a totally separate app where we really go in depth with the Piano Everyday app just on its own, uh, because that's something that's somewhat universal to the whole Roland experience. Uh, on top of that, you've got Metronome. You also have the ability to adjust the ambience, the brilliance, and the key touch on here, which are, you know, at this point fairly standard, but it's always worth mentioning that you have the ability to really highly affect and tweak uh, what you can do with the tone on here. The very last thing I'm going to mention uh, actually relates to the very first thing that we talked about in the whole video, which is the Piano Designer app. This is a totally separate app than the Piano Every Day. Piano Designer is fully compatible with the FP30X, and this is where, in addition to the basic editability of ambience, brilliance, and key touch, uh, which you can do even without an app and, and uh, is uh, usable or, or affects all of the tones on here, if you're really focused on getting an acoustic piano that you love, 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 especially if you're going to be using this in a recording application or a regular performance application, Use the Piano Designer app, and that's where you're going to basically lift the hood up on the Supernatural engine and get into an insane amount of detail uh, editing that tone. Very, very similar to, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the harmonic imaging engine that Kawhi gives you access to through Virtual Technician. Uh, very, very similar approach. So you can save it. Uh, you don't have to edit it every single time you open it up. It stays with the instrument, uh, and you'll certainly love it. So So, to conclude, we've got the FP30X. This is uh, one of the new updates from Roland in their FP series. It sits on top of the FP10 and below the FP60X and the FP90X. This is an instrument that is highly affordable. Uh, it is available in the United States for around the $800 mark in Canada. It comes in right around the $1,100 mark and in markets around the world, I'm sure, kind of floats between those two points depending on your currency and your area. Uh, and it's one of those pianos uh, that's remarkable to me because of how serviceable it is to the professional community. This is going to appeal to a lot of people who are looking for lightweight gigging keyboards where piano tone uh, and action quality are priority, 
because they are finally including the quarter inch uh, stereo outputs on there, because of the sheer number of sounds that are available on there, uh, and the lightweightness of it, as well as the quality of, of the speakers. This really truly puts it into uh, you know, a category uh, that not too many instruments uh, are in. Uh, I think it's in some ways playing catch up a little bit with the Casio PXS 3000, which also had the stereo outputs, huge number of sounds, uh, and I think really caught some people by surprise. But unlike the Casio, for people who are really, really focused on action, that PHA4 is definitely going to outplay uh, the Casio, you know, smart, uh, smart graded uh, action on the PXS 3000 uh, quite handily, in my personal opinion. So thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the review. Hope you got something out of it. We always just try and you know share our observations with the instrument and, and uh, really trust that it's something of value to you out there all around the world. If this is the first time that you've caught us here on the channel and you liked what you saw, subscribe. We're always coming out with new videos. Uh, and certainly one to check out for or look for next would be the FP30X and comparing it to its predecessor, particularly for people who maybe had their eye on the 30, wondering if the 30X truly is an upgrade, or maybe current owners who are thinking about possibly trading in uh, or wondering what the FP60 or FP90X is all about as well. So thank you so much. My name is Stu Harrison. This has been Miriam Pianos on YouTube, and we'll see you back soon.